What's going on, everyone? Welcome back. Today, we've got our week five NFL game picks outright versus the spread along with our locks of the week. And if you guys enjoy, hit that like button, subscribe. Also, give us a follow on Twitter at All Day Pigskin to continue interacting with us and see our up to date thoughts on these games as far as the betting is concerned. And also, Give us a follow on alldaypickskin.com. If you guys want early access to these picks, just sign up for a free newsletter and you will get just that. But in the meantime, let's get right into it. Before getting into our breakdown, we want to give you guys a quick word from our sponsors at Overlay Fantasy Sports who are taking DFS to a whole nother level. And we specifically want to highlight their all new matchup shop, which is absolutely electric. And trust us, folks, we've been using Overlay Fantasy since the start of the NFL season, and it has been an absolute blast because let's face it, betting on the same old team A versus team B you know, spread picks can get a little bit boring. So why not spice things up a little bit? The matchup shop function at Overlay Fantasy Sports does exactly that as it allows you to pick between individual player matchups and who you think at the end of the day will have better fantasy production. So take advantage of that. You guys are doing all of this homework to begin with for your fantasy squad. So why not have it benefit your wallet as well? You can pretty much bet on any single matchup that you want. Leading up to Thursday night football, you can go running back versus running back in the Denver Broncos versus the New York Jets. And as long as you think that a certain player will have, let's say here, Melvin Gordon and Frank Gore within 11 points of fantasy production, then smash that buy button. But maybe you don't want to focus in on that matchup. No problem. Overlay Fantasy has other options as well. From quarterback matchups to wide receiver matchups, it is all there. The spread picks works exactly like you are used to when betting other sports. So no worries there. And if you guys want to add a couple picks to a single betting slip, then that works as well. Get that parlay going to win big. And right now, take advantage of some other sport options as well. Not only the NFL, you've got golf, MLB, and NBA. There are plenty of opportunities here to make some money. So take advantage of this incredible situation and the awesome matchup shop function within Overlay Fantasy our first game of the week features the Tampa Bay Bucks at the Chicago Bears. Both these teams were 3-1 and one on Thursday night. And if you guys follow us on Twitter at AllDayPigskin or are signed up for a free newsletter at AllDayPigskin.com, you knew our thoughts on this contest. We liked the Bucks outright and on the spread, which opened at plus 5.5 for Chicago, ultimately went all the way down to plus 3.5. But we have no problem admitting that the Chicago Bears flipped the script. And even though we still don't think the Bears are quite as good as their record would indicate, maybe what we should have been saying is neither are the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And sure, some of that might be because of Chris Godwin being out, Mike Evans being less than 100%. But give credit where credit is due because the Chicago Bears kept this game low scoring and Nick Foles was able to generate some scoring drives and get this thing done. So unfortunately, we do start off the week at 0-2, but we will rebound. Our first game on Sunday features a divisional clash between the Carolina Panthers at the Atlanta Falcons. The Panthers 2-2 two two coming off yet another upset victory, this time over the Cardinals, while the Falcons still winless 0-4 after getting thoroughly dominated by the Packers last week. And yet, despite all of that, the Falcons are favored here. Now, maybe some of you are saying, well, how in the hell is that possible? The Falcons, they can't stop anybody defensively. They're dealing with some injuries offensively with guys like Julio Jones. That's had that bugging hamstring issue for a while now. And versus the Packers, they got even more injured, especially in the secondary defensively. And the Panthers, well, the Panthers are in a little bit of a role right now. They've been putting up some points and maybe some people think they're better than their record might suggest but look for what it's worth when you look at these nfc south divisional clashes two things stand out first and foremost they're usually extremely high scoring and the second thing is if you specifically look at the panthers versus the falcons these last few years even in 2019 when the falcons were underdogs they thoroughly handled the carolina panthers and I think we could see a similar type of result. I honestly do, because in my opinion, even though the Falcons have the worst record, the Panthers, with two more wins, have kind of 
in the last two weeks, taken advantage of some inexperienced quarterbacks. If you think about it, they've beaten Justin Herbert and they've beaten Kyler Murray. Guys that can tend to be a little bit inconsistent. Whereas the Falcons, well, Matt Ryan is a former MVP quarterback. And say what you will about the Falcons, their offense is very much so elite. And they can put up numbers with the best of them. So for that reason, as long as the trio of Russell Gage, Calvin Ridley, and Julio Jones plays, I give the edge to the Atlanta Falcons. Defensively, neither one of these teams scares me one bit. And I think, honestly, the best bet here that you could make is taking the over on the points. To me, that is an almost certifiable lock. Now, the spread, like we said, minus three and a half for the Falcons. I'm going to take the Falcons outright. I, I really do believe the more experienced team offensively will win. And Teddy Bridgewater might have some nice moments, no doubt about it. But at the end of the day, I will take the offense that I feel is better. However, on the spread, I will hedge my bets here and I will take Carolina. If the spread was a little bit lower, I'd go with the Falcons. But right now with this minus three and a half number with how bad the Atlanta defense is and with them not really blowing out anybody, I'm going to take the Panthers on the spread. Next up, we've got the Buffalo Bills at the Tennessee Titans. And this was a game that was originally supposed to be played on Sunday, but now has actually been moved to Tuesday, which is kind of wild due to additional positive COVID tests for the Titans. And I'll still tell you, we're not out of the woods yet here, folks, because it could still very well be postponed, get canceled, whatever the situation might be if further positive tests come out for the Titans. But as of right now, it's still slated for week five. So we will break it down. The Bills are 4-0, still undefeated, continue to take care of business. Josh Allen continues to look great, an MVP type of candidate. Whereas the Tennessee Titans, look, they're still undefeated, 3-0, obviously because they didn't play last week due to their postponed game. But there are some issues here for the Titans. First and foremost, they have some serious injuries or unavailabilities offensively because on the wide receiver side of things, they will be without Corey Davis and Adam Humphreys. And at this point in time, the Titans have to be crossing their fingers and praying that A.J. Brown will return this week and play. But the thing is, even if he does, will he be at 100%? So all of a sudden now, you've got an offense that is very limited offensively. Yes, they are run first. But versus a Bills team that's been putting up points at a very good pace, I don't think you're going to be able to rely on the Titans and Derrick Henry solely. So we're going to have to see a lot from Ryan Tannehill with very limited resources. The Bills, like we said, they are good defensively as well. And I think all in all, this is just a lot to ask for from the Titans. The Bills are a lot healthier offensively they've got a lot of wide receiver weapons from Diggs to Brown to Beasley Devin Singletary is in a nice little groove right now Josh Allen continues to play great throwing the ball all over the place the Titans defense not all that intimidating what I'm trying to say is I love the Bills in this game as long as it takes place this week. And the spread only plus one and a half for the Titans. This is practically a pick 'em. If you guys like the Bills like we do outright, then this is a slam dunk pick for the Bills on the spread as well. I am taking this one to the bank. Next up, we've got the Cincinnati Bengals at the Baltimore Ravens, another divisional clash. The Bengals won two and one as Joe Burrow got his first victory of his young NFL career, taking down the Jaguars while the Ravens 3-1, also victorious versus Washington as they took care of business. And in this game, they're actually relatively big time favorites at minus 13 and a half on the spread. And that'll be interesting, but let's address the outright matchup initially because I do think that one is much simpler. Now, I'll begin here. Offensively, I actually think that the Bengals have a lot more weapons for Joe Burrow than what Lamar Jackson has to work with. Because for Lamar, other than a boomer bust Marquise Brown and a Mark Andrews, there's not much else. Lamar Jackson just kind of has to do it by himself afterwards. Whereas Joe Burrow, well, he's got Tyler Boyd, A.J. Green, despite 
him being inefficient is healthy and available, an emerging T. Higgins, and also Joe Mixon, who finally had that huge breakout game, and I believe he was instrumental in getting the first victory for the Cincinnati Bengals. And if the Bengals want to continue to contend in matchups and collect victories, Joe Mixon is going to be, in my opinion, the most important factor in that offense. The problem is, this is just a bad matchup if you look at the Baltimore Ravens. First and foremost, Lamar Jackson playing versus the Cincinnati defense, even though the Bengals have more weapons offensively, Lamar Jackson being the X factor that he is, I think he incredibly reduces the offensive gap because of what he can do with his legs and the defensive matchup here. And then for the Ravens, they're just a lot more disciplined defensively than the Jacksonville Jaguars. I don't see them letting Joe Mixon run wild. They're going to make Joe Burrow beat them with his arm. And there's going to be a lot of passing volume in this game for Joe Burrow, I believe. And mixed into that will probably be a turnover or two. What I'm trying to say is this is just a bad matchup for the Cincinnati Bengals. And I have to give the edge to the Baltimore Ravens here. I like them to win outright. Right now, the Bengals just still a little bit too young, still a little bit too inconsistent. And like I said, they need to get Joe Mixon going consistently. I don't see that being the case here. On the spread, however, minus 13 and a half, that's a big number. And I do expect maybe the Bengals to get some garbage time points just because of the number of weapons that they have. Maybe they wear down that defense a little bit late in that game. So I will actually take the Bengals on the spread and say that if they do lose, it won't be by more than 14 points. Moving on, we've got the Las Vegas Raiders at the Kansas City Chiefs. Divisional clash here as well. The Raiders 2-2 two and two, and all of a sudden they're on a two-game losing streak and it doesn't get any easier with the matchup versus the undefeated Chiefs who are 4-0 and just took down the New England Patriots. And sure, maybe they were grounded offensively longer than expected versus New England last week, but they were ultimately able to get it going and get that victory. And at the end of the day, we just don't believe that the Raiders have the personnel available defensively to duplicate the effort that we saw from the Patriots. And additionally, on top of that, if you look at this matchup from last year, the two times these two teams met, the Chiefs swept those games in pretty dominant fashion. And I expect in week five, the Chiefs, after kind of having a mediocre game offensively in week four, to put their best foot forward here versus the Raiders in a defense that doesn't scare us all that much and I expect a big offensive performance from Kansas City all the way from Patrick Mahomes, Tyree Hill, Travis Kelsey and specifically Clyde edwards lair I think you could argue this might be his easiest matchup of the year. I think we could see a big CEH type of blow up game and on the other side for the Raiders offensively look for them I think something that's concerning is how much Josh Jacobs has struggled to kind of get it going after week one. Now, to be fair, he's faced some tough defenses, but unfortunately, it's not going to get any easier here versus a disciplined Kansas City Chiefs defense, and especially offensively when the Raiders primarily for wide receiver wise have to rely on unproven rookies who are kind of a little bit dinged up right now. And other than that, their best pass catcher on this team is Darren Waller. So if you take away Waller and if you have this game all of a sudden be a double digit lead for the Kansas City Chiefs, that means the Raiders will have to abandon the run yet again. That's just a bad combination in my eyes. That's how I see this game playing out right now. They just have, like I said, too many injuries, some unproven players. And even though Derek Carr is actually playing pretty well, I don't see how the Raiders will be able to keep pace with the Kansas City Chiefs. I'm taking the Chiefs outright. Yes, the spread is a little bit high at minus 12 and a half. But like I said, I think right now the Chiefs are going to come out here in week five and have a big time bounce back game. I think they can win by close to two touchdowns. So I will take them on the spread. 
Before continuing, I want to tell you guys a little bit about a new partner of ours in Thrive Fantasy, which is an absolutely awesome daily fantasy sports app that specializes in player props. And the great thing about Thrive Fantasy is that it's super simple to use as they've eliminated the need to do countless hours of research because they only ask you about the top tier athletes in a respective sport. Literally, all you have to do is find a contest and join it. From there, just select the props you like and rack up the most points to win a share of the prize pool. And it's not just the NFL. There's NBA, MLB, PGA. Literally, you think it, Thrive Fantasy has it. In fact, Thrive has awarded over a million and a half dollars in prizes since launching in 2018 and has $50,000 guaranteed in prizes weekly. So sign up today and when you use promo code all day on sign up, you receive an instant match bonus up to $50. You can download Thrive Fantasy on the App Store, Play Store, or by visiting their website, thrivefantasy.com. So stop waiting, sign up today, use promo code all day, and start propping up today. Continuing on, we have got the LA Rams at Washington. The Rams 3-1 and took care of the Giants while Washington losing to the Baltimore Ravens like we predicted now at 1-3. and But there is big news coming out of this game, and that's courtesy of Washington as they have finally made the decision to bench Dwayne Haskins in favor of Kyle Allen. And I know a lot of people might be on the fence about this decision and giving Washington crap about it, but look, in our opinion, this was the right move to make. We actually, before the season began, had a prediction that Washington at some point in time would bench Dwayne Haskins for exactly this move. Because last year, if you go back to 2019, even when Haskins was doing okay at best towards the end of the season, that was versus some bottom of the barrel defenses and a point in time where playoff seating was already determined and teams didn't really have all that much to play for. And fast forward to 2020, five weeks into the season, Haskins hasn't really done all that much. And when you have your own head coach say that you're the reason why that your team has been being held back, that's a pretty strong statement. So I actually think that this is a good move. And let's not forget that Kyle Allen and Ron Rivera have history together last year in Carolina. This was the duo that got it done. And with Ron Rivera coming to Washington, he brought a lot of his guys from Carolina here in terms of the coaching staff. So I believe that Allen knows this system and that he'll actually, at least on the short term, be able to provide a spark offensively. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that Kyle Allen is the answer to the quarterback situation in Washington. We saw last year that he can be inconsistent in Carolina and that he can be turnover prone as well. And this is a tough defense for the Rams. But you've got some similar type of playmakers here in Washington like you did in Carolina last year. You've got a DJ Moore type of guy in Terry McLaurin. Now, Antonio Gibson, I'm not saying he's Christian McCaffrey, but he possesses a lot of the same qualities. But ultimately, the problems here are Washington still has a very bad offensive line and still just a young team in general, which is why I'm not going to get too cute. I'm still taking the Rams to win this game. I think from top to bottom, they are the better team. But this is a matchup of two good defenses, and I actually think this might be a little bit of a lower scoring affair, which is why I actually like Washington on the spread as crazy as that might sound. The spread right now, plus eight and a half for Washington. Call me crazy, but I think Kyle Allen will provide a short-term boost to this offense, kind of galvanize the troops, and I think this will be a closer game than people expect. Ultimately, the Rams win, but Washington keeps us close, so for that reason, Rams outright, Washington on the spread. Next up, we've got the Arizona Cardinals at the New York Jets. The Cardinals 2-2 two two after yet another upset loss, this time to the Carolina Panthers, while the New York Jets 0-4 still winless, losing on Thursday night. And the big news here for the Jets, Sam Darnold won't be available in this game. It'll be Joe Flacco starting, at least for the short term. And the question we have to ask ourselves is, what does this mean for the Jets' offense? Is this an improvement? Is it really no movement at all? Or is it... A step back honestly I'm not sure how to answer that question because Sam Darnold hasn't looked all that great to be honest with you yes Joe Flacco is the more experienced quarterback but he hasn't played for a while now and he'll probably be a little bit rusty and offensively other than Jamison Crowder what do the Jets have to work with yes they may get Le'Veon Bell back this week which will be a nice boost but I'm not sure that's enough to keep up pace with the Cardinals and look 
Addressing the Cardinals, yes, they have been colossal disappointments these last two weeks. They have been underperforming, and maybe we gave them a little bit too much credit to kick off the year because now it seems like over a year ago since they beat the 49ers, but no, that was only a couple of weeks ago. Unfortunately, they haven't been able to regain that type of performance really since then. Now, for what it's worth, though, is there a better bounce back type of performance and option than playing the New York Jets? I don't think so. I think the Cardinals finally get right and get back to their winning ways. And I'll be the first to admit, if something happens here where the Cardinals struggle and the Jets somehow upset them, then we will have to seriously talk about the Cardinals and their identity next week and moving forward. But for now, in week five, I like the Cardinals. Look, I think Kyler Murray will bounce back. I've been saying that now for the last week, but I firmly believe it versus the New York Jets. The Cardinals with DeAndre Hopkins, a little bit healthier now. I do think Kenyon Drake will get it going. And one way or another, I think the Cardinals win this game. As bad as their defense has been, I do think Joe Flacco is good for a couple of turnovers. So I think that the defense might actually play a part in this victory. What I'm trying to say is I like the Arizona Cardinals. The spread, the Jets plus six and a half. I don't think that number is all that high. And with the change at quarterback and the inconsistency issues offensively, I will take the Cardinals on the spread as well. Next up, we've got the Philadelphia Eagles at the Pittsburgh Steelers. The Eagles won 2-1, and one, getting their first victory of the year, beating the 49ers last week, while the Steelers coming off an unplanned bye. They are 3-0. and oh. And now, even though the Eagles are coming off a victory, this is a bad matchup all the way for them because, simply put, I don't think the Eagles win last week if Jimmy Garoppolo was there for the San Francisco 49ers. And even... When that was the case, the Eagles still were in a dogfight. So now, fast forward to week five, where they play a rested Pittsburgh team that is coming off that unplanned bye, and they have a guy like a Deontay Johnson, who's a big weapon for them offensively, clearing the concussion protocol, and a top five defense, probably the best defense in the NFL, going up against a struggling Carson Wentz who is missing a lot of weapons offensively this does not bode well for the philadelphia eagles plain and simple i don't see this game going in favor of the eagles any which way the only two scenarios that i see is that either pittsburgh blows out the philadelphia eagles or maybe roethlisberger struggles a little bit has some turnovers and the Pittsburgh Steelers get a close victory. But either way, I see the Steelers winning this game. If I had to give you my honest prediction, I'd probably say it's somewhere in the middle. I don't see this being all that much of a high-scoring affair. I think that the Steelers clamp down on the Eagles and take advantage of these early season struggles for Carson Wentz and just how injury riddled the Eagles are offensively, whereas the Steelers kind of healthy in that department in terms of pass catchers, in terms of running back, offensive line. What I'm trying to say is I'll take the Steelers here to win outright. I think this is a very clear cut type of situation. On the spread, Steelers minus six and a half. You know, I could see you taking the Eagles here, but right now I just think the Steelers have too many things going in their favor. The Eagles too injury riddled right now and facing a very stout defense i'll take the steelers on the spread as well next up we've got the jacksonville jaguars at the houston texans the jaguars one and three after losing to the Bengals, while the houston texans still winless oh and four and that has led to the big news of bill o'brien being let go by houston and things were trending in that direction with how bad the texans had struggled with some questionable trades over this last year initiated by Bill O'Brien and now it's going to be a new era in Houston for the time being it'll be interim head coach Romeo Crennel leading the squad and honestly I think that this potentially could help galvanize this team a little bit play a little bit better uh, we'll see a lot of the rumors in terms of that locker room was that the players weren't really responding to Bill O'Brien, but that's a conversation for another time. As far as the matchup itself here, the Jaguars just got absolutely dominated by the Bengals and specifically Joe Mixon. 
and I think this could be a big game for David Johnson. Honestly, the Texans should just follow the game plan that the Bengals had last week, and despite them, you know, not having a big-time wide receiver, cough, cough, DeAndre Hopkins, they should still be able to win this game. You know, sure, the Jaguars have a guy like a DJ Shark and a James Robinson. You know, you could argue that the Texans are in a similar situation with a Will Fuller and a David Johnson. But at the end of the day, Gardner Minshew versus Deshaun Watson. I'll take Deshaun Watson every single day of the week. Minshew, just a little bit too inconsistent, you know, while... Watson, a lot more experienced. I think he can do a lot more with his legs as well. Just better decision making in general. Defensively, neither one of these teams scares me all that much. But I do think, at least again, in the short term here, this decision to move away from Bill O'Brien could bring this team a little bit closer together, as crazy as that sounds. I will take the Houston Texans to get their first victory of the season. I like them outright. And I think they could respond in a big way here. I actually have them covering the spread as well. The spread minus six and a half. So for that reason, I think the Houston Texans pull away late and dominate this game as it progresses. Next up, we've got the Miami Dolphins at the San Francisco 49ers. Miami 1-3, and three, losing to Seattle last week, which we all kind of expected. While the 49ers 2-2, two and two, Tough loss versus the Eagles, but when you consider they went down to their third string quarterback, well, you know, I can't blame them too much there. But the fact of the matter is there are rumors that Jimmy Garoppolo will be returning for this game, and that's a big deal because quietly, other than the quarterback position, the 49ers have gotten healthier. George Kittle returned, Brendan Ayuk, Debo Samuel, and once Raheem Mostert comes back, you know, whenever that is, honestly, they don't need to rush him because Jarek McKinnon has filled in great. This is an offense that will be back in full force. And defensively, even though there's been injuries there, they've been doing pretty well. So what we're trying to say is, as long as Jimmy Garoppolo plays in this game, we like the San Francisco 49ers to win. Now, for what it's worth, we should say that the Miami Dolphins can keep up with teams. I mean, for a while, they were keeping up with the Seattle Seahawks last week. But again, I do think the better team will prevail, and that should be the 49ers if Jimmy Garoppolo is there. There have been some rumors that, you know, maybe Tua comes into play this week, but that was shut down. It'll continue to be the Ryan Fitzpatrick show. I do think that is the correct move. Continue to have Tua just watch and learn. No need to rush him out there. You know, there's enough problems for the Dolphins right now. That offensive line, question mark. The rushing attack hasn't been able to get it going. And outside of Devontae Parker, those other pieces in terms of pass catchers haven't really been able to step up. The defense, again, not all that great either. So for that reason, I think this spells a San Francisco 49ers victory here. My one condition is that Jimmy Garoppolo has to play. And if that is the case, I will take the 49ers outright. On the spread, they're minus eight and a half, so I will take them there. But again, the condition, if Garoppolo plays, if he doesn't, then I would take the Dolphins on the spread. Next up, we've got the Indianapolis Colts at the Cleveland Browns. Both these teams, three and one, the Colts beating the Bears, the Browns taking out the Dallas Cowboys in a nice underdog victory. But the question we have to ask is, are these teams as good as their records? And let's start with the Cleveland Browns, who had a pretty impressive victory over the Cowboys as they put up over 40 points on that team. But the question we have to ask again is, was that for real? Or was that just a result of playing the lonely Cowboys defense? And do we believe in the Browns and Baker Mayfield? Because even though the Browns are three and one, Baker Mayfield hasn't looked all that great. I mean, last week, offensively, a lot of the scoring came from trick plays, from the rushing attack, you know, from some type of gadget type of plays. And now, you know, the Browns suffered a big injury to Nick Chubb. But for what it's worth, I do think they have a very capable backup in Kareem Hunt, who actually I've been saying since the start of the season is a better running back than Nick Chubb. So I don't think they'll miss a beat there. What worries me here is just Baker Mayfield and him being able to play consistently. And the Colts defense is better than that of the Dallas Cowboys, in case you guys were wondering. But to be fair, the Colts, they're also have struggled and it starts with Philip Rivers there we thought he'd be better and this offense would be a little bit more potent with him under center but it's clear to see that he's struggled 
And the wide receivers for the Colts, they've been injured. And the lone guy that's left, you know, T.Y. Hilton, he's been extremely underwhelming. Honestly, I think this game at the end of the day could very well be a coin flip. And I would urge you guys to hedge your bets on this one. I'm going to take the Indianapolis Colts because ultimately I believe more so in Phillip Rivers than I do in Baker Mayfield. Yes, I realize the Browns have more offensive weapons, but the question is, can Baker Mayfield actually capitalize on that? And I'm not sure that the answer to that question is yes quite yet. So I like the Colts to win this game. Whichever way it goes, I think it'll be very close and both teams will have a chance to win. But the spread right now, plus two and a half for the Browns. I'm going to take the Browns on the spread. Like I said, I think this is a great game to hedge your bets because it could very well go either way. Continuing on, we have got the New York Giants at the Dallas Cowboys, an NFC least divisional clash. But no, look, in all seriousness, this game could actually have NFC East divisional implications in terms of who comes out of that division at the end of the year. The Giants are 0-4 as the offense continues to struggle, losing to the Rams last week, while the Cowboys 1-3, losing to the Cleveland Browns. And despite Dak Prescott's best efforts, he could not you know, overcome the hole that that Dallas defense put him in. And that has been the story of the season for the Dallas Cowboys. You know, similar to maybe the Atlanta Falcons, all the talent in the world offensively, but defensively, that has been their Achilles heel. Now, for what it's worth, the Cowboys are favorites here, as well they should be, but we question whether the spread should be this high. You know, Dallas at minus nine and a half, almost double digits. And after what we've seen from this Dallas defense, is that warranted? And sure, we recognize the Giants have struggled offensively, like we said, but this should be a great matchup for Daniel Jones in terms of him getting right in what could be a very high scoring contest. The Giants don't have as many weapons as the Cowboys. We can admit that offensively, but they should still have their fair share of opportunities. However, when it's all said and done, we will take Dak Prescott and all of his weapons 10 times out of 10 compared to the injured Giants. But to be fair, we are going to go with the Giants on the spread as this Dallas defense is simply too big of a liability right now and we can't rule out garbage time points. So the Dallas Cowboys outright, but the Giants on the spread. Next up, we've got the Denver Broncos at the New England Patriots. The Broncos 1-3, and three, beating the Jets last week for their first victory, while the Patriots 2-2, two and two, losing to the Chiefs. Look, valiant effort, but ultimately they couldn't overcome the loss of Cam Newton, who is on the COVID IR list. And speaking of COVID and the New England Patriots, this was a game that was originally supposed to be played Sunday, but because of an additional COVID positive test for the Patriots in Gilmore. It's a big loss for them in the secondary. It will tentatively be played on Monday. So in terms of breaking it down, this is a game where we're probably not going to see that high scoring of an affair because it'll probably feature Brett Rippon and Jared Stidham as far as the quarterback battle. There's an outside chance that Drew Locke could play, but I think that the Broncos will play it safe here. And with what a great job the Patriots defense did versus the Kansas City Chiefs, I think they'll be able to hold down the Broncos offensively who are struggling with injuries. You know, for them, no Corlin Sutton, no KJ Hamler, no Noah Fant. It's it's a tough situation for them, whoever the quarterback is. This is not an easy matchup for them. You know, the Patriots, they are still very good and disciplined defensively. Hell, we saw it versus the Kansas City Chiefs, like we mentioned. But on the other side, the offense for the New England Patriots, well, there's not a lot to like here because without Cam Newton, this is a game where who are you going to rely on? Julian Edelman, you know, Nikhil Harry, Bird. It's nice to see that James White returned, but this offense is nowhere near the same without Cam Newton. He is the engine that makes this thing go for the Patriots. And without him, I think this will probably be kind of an ugly, sloppy game for both these teams. I think it'll be relatively low scoring. I don't see either one of these teams blowing out the other. I will tentatively give the edge to the New England Patriots. I just think right now that where you know neither one of these teams has the huge advantage at quarterback, I'm going to go with the better defense and the better 
coach team to me that's still the new england patriots so i'll take them out right but on the spread the patriots are currently minus 10 and a half that's a huge number so i'll actually take the denver broncos on the spread Moving on to Sunday night, we have got the Minnesota Vikings at the Seattle Seahawks. The Vikings 1-3 and three after taking down the Houston Texans. Nice victory for them. But now they're going to have their hands full versus the undefeated Seahawks who are 4-0, and oh, beating the Miami Dolphins. And for our money's worth, they are still the best team in the NFL with the front runner for MVP in Russell Wilson. Now, sure. Wilson didn't throw for over 400 yards and four or five touchdowns last week, but he was still plenty of good. And I think he kind of bounces back this week, him and Tyler Lockett versus this decimated Vikings secondary, just a bad defense in general. But to be fair, the Seattle defense hasn't been all that great either. And I think you could actually probably call this a wash in terms of defenses. So if we just look at the two offenses, well, that's where we just have to say that Seattle Seahawks are the better squad overall because yes, Justin Jefferson has been a nice revelation for the Minnesota Vikings, but he's still a rookie. He will still have up and down moments. Whereas for the Seattle Seahawks, Tyler Lockett, DK Metcalf, I would take those two guys over Thielen and Justin Jefferson. You throw in some Greg Olson, who's also been a nice addition to this team. And, you know, Chris Carson, who sure isn't as dominant as Dalvin Cook, but he can carry the load and be effective when needed. Then you look at the quarterback position, and that's the clear-cut advantage for the Seattle Seahawks. Russell Wilson over Kirk Cousins every single day. Yes, Kirk Cousins has taken advantage of some good matchups previously, but Russell Wilson can absolutely do the same, and he's not nearly as mistake prone as Kirk Cousins give me the Seattle Seahawks here to win this game I do think that this could be a very high scoring affair just because of the two defenses involved could turn into a shootout uh, but either way I like the Seattle Seahawks to win here the Russell Wilson factor the spread though is a little bit interesting we have it at minus seven and a half for the Seahawks if you can somehow get that number down to maybe seven or six and a half i would feel much more comfortable taking the seattle seahawks i'll still tentatively take them on the spread but my advice to you would be to tease down that number and go with seattle on the spread then and finally we have got the la chargers at the new orleans saints the chargers one and three tough loss versus the bucks but valiant effort from justin herbert more on him later while the new orleans saints two and two getting back in the win column taking down the Detroit Lions. And speaking of Herbert, the big news for the Chargers is that he has been named the starter. Tyrod Taylor will be the number two. Herbert showed enough positive things while Taylor was out to win the starting job. And we say good on him because we agree with it. This offense just looks better with Herbert under center. He just doesn't tuck the ball and run every single play. He uses his arms and identifies those weapons that the Chargers have. Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, Hunter Henry, we would say Austin Eckler, but the Chargers lost him due to injury last week, and that will be a big blow to this offense. You could argue he was their best all-around offensive weapon. They'll try and replace him with Josh Kelly and Justin Jackson, but I doubt it will be the same. While for the New Orleans Saints, they could potentially be getting back some players from injury. We've been saying this tentatively for Michael Thomas. He should return this week. And if he does, again, that's a huge boost to this offense. But what's even more important here, I would say, were the plethora of guys that missed last week defensively that should be returning for the Saints. And if that's the case, I think the Saints hold the advantage in this matchup. And if Michael Thomas truly does return, then I would say forget about it. Simply put, Justin Herbert opposing a very experienced type of quarterback in Drew Brees. I have to give the advantage to the Saints, especially with this game being in New Orleans. Yes, I realize there won't be that true home field advantage, but still, I will go with the Saints here. I like them to pull away late in this contest. However, the spread minus seven and a half, I will give this condition. If Michael Thomas comes back, then I will go with the Saints there. If he does not, I will take the Chargers instead. 
So with that, we wrap up our pickums. Now looking at our locks of the week, we begin with the Cincinnati Bengals at the Baltimore Ravens. Give us the Ravens here. Simply put, this is a bad matchup for Cincinnati. The defense not good enough to stop Baltimore Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore defense too good to allow Joe Mixon to run wild. So we like the Ravens there. Next, Las Vegas at the Chiefs. We will take the Chiefs over the Raiders. Right now, the Raiders just struggling in terms of having enough healthy guys. Bad matchup for Josh Jacobs. The defense doesn't scare us. We think the Chiefs come out red hot after that tough victory over the New England Patriots. Best foot forward here, and they beat the Raiders. Then we've got the New York Giants at the Dallas Cowboys. Yes, this Dallas Cowboys defense is a liability, but we think that this offense with Dak Prescott and all those receiving weapons and Ezekiel Elliott will be enough to outduel Daniel Jones and that struggling New York offense. And finally, Minnesota at the Seattle Seahawks. Give us Russell Wilson over Kirk Cousins is as simple as that. Russell Wilson takes care of the football much better. He's on an MVP pace. We like him to have a big time game versus this Minnesota defense. So with that, we wrap up this breakdown of our week five NFL game picks outright on the spread along with our locks of the week and as always let us hear it in the comment section did you agree disagree along with any other questions you guys might have and if you enjoyed hit that like button subscribe also give us a follow on twitter at all day pigskin to continue interacting with us as the week progresses and if you guys want early access to these pigs really simple all you have to do is check us out online at alldaypigskin.com and sign up for our free newsletter all the details in the description so in the meantime we'll see you guys in future videos